Hello there. Good of you to join me. Don't know if you guys knew this. Today's a special occasion. Hence why I'm dressed for the attire. All right, let's 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 run down the attire, shall we? We've got Sonic hat. We've got a Sonic mask, which I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to take off. It's rather warm in here. <laughs> the hat may also be coming off in a bit. We've got a Sonic shirt. We've got a Sonic hoodie. We've got Sonic Jim Jams. We've got Sonic slippers. And we've got Sonic socks. <laughs> so make no mistake about it, boys and girls. Today is going to be... Oh gosh, it really is warm in here. <laughs> Today is going to be a very sunny key kind of day. I absolutely dress for the occasion. <laughs> That's coming off as well. God, it really is warm in here. Sorry. Ah, man, oh man. Who have we got in the chat here tonight? Nana, how's it going? I am doing very well. How are you? How's it Kujeka? Can you feel the sunshine? Oh, yes. We're going to be getting that one. We're going to be getting all the classics. Gwen, good to see you here. All right, guys. Tonight... We are wrapping up Sonic Month in style. I've absolutely exhausted myself. I've barely been here for a minute and I'm, <laughs> I'm shattered from taking a hat off. Mm. Absolutely committed to the bit. Probably should be committed to a mental asylum, but hey-ho. Tonight, we're wrapping things up. It is day 31 of July. It is day 31 of Sonic Month. We're going to be playing game 31, the final game of the classic Sonic era, Sonic R, on the Sega Saturn. We are then going to be taking a quickie look at Sonic Jam, specifically the Sonic World mode from that game. We're going to cross off the missions from that. We're going to have a little look around Sonic's world. And then finally, <laughs> I'm going to drag you guys over to uh, Tier Maker, where I've put together a little uh, put together a little tier list thing. And we are going to rank the classic Sonic era. Well, I'm going to give you my tier list. You guys may disagree, and you're very welcome to. And I'll share the link on Twitter afterwards. We'll all be able to pile in, and that'll be great. So where did that mouse go? Because it's time. That's enough chat. That's enough preamble. Oh, yes. It's time to hop into the game. It's time for some Sonic R. It is time to feel the sunshine. As usual, guys, if uh, the sound's a little louder, a little quiet, let me know, and I'll alter it accordingly. <laughs> That's them that makes the Sonic games. Another one by Traveller's Tales. And of course, one of the most iconic of all the Sonic tunes. Just gonna check that sounds reasonably okay. I'm just gonna turn the TV down a little bit. Slight echo from me in the background. I do apologise. Let's turn that up a bit. That sounds reasonably okay to me. You guys, let me know what uh, what you think. Alrighty, so we got the Sonic R title screen. And if you press the D-pad, you can make the R spin. Wow, what an Easter egg! Let's hop right in. Okay. Sonic R is basically incoming best main menu theme. Oh yes, sounds good, good, get to, glad to hear it. Sonic R is basically the only proper outing for Sonic on the Sega Saturn. The Saturn was, excuse you, I did not tell you to back out. <laughs> the Saturn was basically doomed from the start. Um, it never really had a chance to get a foothold in the market. The PlayStation kicked its backside. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Tonight we are going to be playing on easy because I am not used to the controls on uh, this this game. I am out of practice with Sonic R. Um, and I've played more of the GameCube version, which is very much the fixed version, so to speak. A lot of the bugs are fixed in it, it's tightened up, generally speaking, it's got additional effects. This is the original, so we'll just see if it, it plays any different at all. So, 
as you can see there, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 characters. But to begin with, we can only be Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, or Amy. Obviously, you can see character number 5 is clearly Dr. Robotnik. And you can probably guess from the shape of that silhouette that number 6 is, of course, Metal Sonic. Uh, the rest of them, you'd pretty much have to play the game to figure out at the time. Obviously, we know now who they are, but I'm going to spoil it for those of you that don't know. Feel free to, you know, it doesn't, it's not a major spoiler, whatever. <laughs> so, we're going to play Sonic. We only have five stages in the game, one of which you need all the Chaos Emeralds to unlock. We'll try and get those today. I'll try. Yeah, one of them is, of course, Tails Doll. <laughs> this is Tails Doll's debut, everybody knows that, so... In fact, you know what's great? It's not a spoiler. The, the hidden characters are Metal Sonic, Tails Doll, Metal Knuckles, and Egg Robo. Why is it backed out? How dare you? So if you're inactive for even a few seconds, it kicks you back to the title screen. Fantastic. Why would you do that? Why would that be a choice you make? Resort Island, then. Let's start as we mean to go on. To get the secret characters, you have to find five tokens that are hidden throughout the maps. I don't know offhand where all of them are. I only know where very few of them are, so I think we'll not be... We'll probably not be seeing any hidden characters here tonight. Sonic still has his double jump from Sonic Blast, as you can see, and that's going to help him... Ooh, help him get ahead in the early going, I say, before falling into the water. The controls are quite loose and, dare I say it, a little bit on the floaty side. If you hit a wall, sorry, let me uh, let me say that again. When you hit a wall, because you'll definitely hit a wall, you're gonna bounce and ricochet all over the gosh darn place. Oh no! Oh no, a tree! If you try and go from a standing start, you'll find that turning is an absolute chore and a half. Uh, in terms of character tiers, shall we say, for want of a better expression, uh, I believe it's common consensus that Knuckles is the best character in the game. Sonic is, of course, the fastest of the starting roster. Amy is the why-would-you-ever-pick-this-character character, and Robotnik isn't much better. Knuckles is going to win this one, isn't he? I mean, if I hadn't spent half of the race in the water, that might have been a different story, but who knows? Who knows? Not me. The Chaos Emeralds are hidden in the stages, behind various locked doors. Ah, no, this is beating me, damn. I have to proceed swiftly, quite right. Second place isn't too terrible. Not too terrible. <laughs> As has been the case throughout Sonic Month, we are going to be playing casually, so I'm not going to kick myself if I miss any emeralds or character tokens. We'll stick with Sonic. Radical City. Ooh, that's radical, dude. I would like one day to do a proper stream of Sonic. Well, I say proper stream of Sonic. This is a stream of Sonic. A 100% stream of Sonic is what I'm getting at. Um, I'd probably do that on the GameCube version, though, because like, I'm a little bit more confident with the controls and what have you. And it is the superior version of the game. I think most people would pretty well agree with that. Oh, my goodness gracious, that was not good at all. don't remember the way to go. <laughs> I suspect this is going to be, uh, for those of you that have been here throughout Sonic Month, this is going to play a little bit more like Sonic Drift 1 than 2 for me, in terms of I'm not going to get very many wins. This is a game that benefits massively from having a proper analog stick. Uh, so again, the GameCube controller, very much your friend. Oop. 
playing it with a D-pad, it's not quite as comfortable an experience, I gotta say. And yet the thing is, of course, if you uh, if you try and use an Xbox 360 uh, analog stick, it's going to think that you're trying to use a Saturn D-pad, and of course the Saturn D-pad and the 360 controller are not exactly what you might call a one-to-one -one conversion there. So it doesn't really control particularly well. I have this set up to the Xbox 360 D-pad, but it does control... Oh, that's a character token. So we know what those look like. Um, so it controls a little bit better, but... It's still, as you can see... I mean, I'm all over the place. As you can see, it's not very tight control-wise. And again, you know, Knuckles is, like I said, he's the better character because he, he doesn't sort of... Uh, go from 0 to 60 in 0.3 of a second. Obviously Sonic is the fastest character of the starting roster. I think the fastest characters in the game was Sonic, Metal Sonic, and Super Sonic is basically broken. <laughs> if you get all the Chaos Emeralds, you can play as Super Sonic. You get to be him on the Radiant Emerald stage, which is also unlocked when you get all the Emeralds. And he is so unbelievably broken, it's actually ridiculous. Oh, no. I mean, it's just good, silly fun, really. I think there was an emerald through that locked door, never mind. <laughs> the thing is though, if you get character tokens or chaos emeralds, you have to finish first in order to keep them. And I don't think that's going to happen, in fact I know it's not going to happen because we just finished second. <laughs> mm, yeah, I'm not too terrible, couple of second place finishes. You probably noticed, by the way, the uh, crosshairs that were appearing. Oh, we got a follower. Hmm. I've accidentally hidden the uh, follower bar. Dweeby, dweeby low. I hope I'm saying that properly. Where's my chat box gone? I've accidentally hidden the chat box and the uh, follow box. Underneath the uh, the screen there. <clears throat> Where's that gone? Chat box there, and. Follow us there. Marvellous. So if we get any more chats and follows, they should now appear on screen. Fantastic. Lovely stuff. This game... Oh, I got it perfect. Brilliant. I'm glad to hear it. This soundtrack is amazing. Yes, it's incredible. I love it. Why does Amy get a car? That feels like cheating. I assume it's because um, the other characters are established to be super fast and Amy's not. So technically, it would be cheating if she didn't have a car. Technically. <laughs> Uh, it looks like Sonic is adjusting to his new legs or something. Yeah, pretty much. He, he's kind of wonky, bless him, but that's partly the controls, partly the partly the character animation, I guess. But like, that's a, that's a pretty cute Sonic character model, i got to say. I quite like that. If Sonic got a car, it'd be nerfing him. Yeah, imagine making a racing game where Sonic's in a car. Five times. What if it's a Flintstones car? <laughs> by running, that'd be incredible, that's what. Homer, hello, good to see you here, buddy. Uh, Regal Ruin. Uh, sorry, as I was saying, guys, you probably spotted the crosshairs that were on me a few uh, moments back. Robotnik can fire missiles at the uh, the other racers, which I think probably means that he ranks higher than Amy on the tier list because Amy is very not good. She can go over water, I think. The car, like the wheels pop out and it turns into like a little... Um, oh gosh, I don't even know what you'd call it. But like she can, she can go float over the water, like hover over water, if I'm remembering right. Um, oh no, 
that the wrong way? Oh, and if you come to a stop like that, oh my god, it's turning like a tank. Oh, the worst. The worst! That was a commanding lead as well, and I gave it away. Um, Amy is not fun to play as in this game. She's, she's very slow. She also has an incredibly annoying... Oh, character token. Oh, shit. She has an incredibly annoying sound effect accompanying her for the car engine. Tails does as well, actually. He's constantly making a flying... Sort of... Kind of noise. You know, the tail... His, his twin tails, like, making the helicopter noise. But it's really flipping irritating. Uh, I am in last place, and I am sucking. Not winning this one, guys. Uh, I also want to say something else that works against you if you're playing the Saturn version. You've probably noticed this. The draw distance is dreadful. There's loads of hopping, which means it's really difficult to know which way to turn quite a lot of the time. Um, that's fine once you've learned the layout of the tracks, but for the first few times, it's not so great. Uh, again, on the GameCube version, that's fixed. You know, much better technology. It's actually the GameCube version is actually the PC version uh, originally. Uh, the PC version was released twice. Uh, the first one added in things like weather effects. Uh, nice, that's the first spring was crap there. Uh, there were there were weather effects, just other little tightenings. Like I said, the draw distance was include uh, improved. The GameCube version was that basically. And then the PC got another version, which w it basically just means it can run on modern computers, because, oh my god, this has gone horrendously badly wrong. Because the original release was mm, pretty much turn of the millennium, so it, obviously, like, old games, as we know, based on CD-ROMs, do not run very well on modern computers. This is going horrendously, I'm definitely coming last there. Speed shoes. Whoa. Did not mean to do that, but that's okay. So yeah, if if I can make a recommendation, I would say play this game on GameCube. It is a lot of fun when it's under your control. And again, you've got, you know... The, oh no! Oh, he's devastated, look. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, I would say, like I said, I'd, I'd recommend if you're going to play this, play it on the GameCube. It's a much more fun experience all around. I really, really recommend that one. It's Like, Sonic R is a short game. You know, as we've covered, there's only five characters to unlock. Um, there are There's only one stage to unlock. There is only five stages total. It's not a very deep game, but it's a fun game when you can kind of get it on side. And I'm not having much luck with that tonight, as we've seen, of course. Um, but again, if you play on the GameCube version, or indeed on the PC version, the, you know, if you get the, the modern PC version running, it's a good fun time, and I do recommend that. But for the sake of uh, accuracy, we are playing the Saturn version here tonight, so that is why I'm getting my ass kicked. Well, that and the fact I'm grossly out of practice with the game. <laughs> your running sound is the one they're using Scooby-Doo as they're getting ready to be chased by ghosts. What's your favourite Sega console? That would be the Sega Mega Drive. Reactive Factory. Here we go. Uh, the first console I ever had was a Game Gear, and I later had the Mega Drive. Uh, I got the Master System later after that, but the Mega Drive is the one I've got the fondest memories with. You know, it's got some of my all-time favourite games on it. Hmm. Well, I should <laughs> I think it's fairly safe to say we will not be unlocking <laughs> Radiant Emerald here tonight. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if you spotted this. Oh god, see again, the draw distance absolutely scuppered me there. Oh, 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 I feel like I probably shouldn't be here. Oh no, oh no. I don't know if you guys noticed, uh, Resort Island, uh, Radical City, Regal Ruin, Reactive Factory, Radiant Emerald, they all begin with... 
Ah, oh. Sonic R. Character token, which I just missed, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> what happens when you get all five character tokens in a level and finish first is you are then challenged to a one-on-one -on -one race with the uh, unlockable hidden characters. If you beat them in the race, you get to play as them, which I like. That's a fun way to unlock characters. I do think it's kind of a shame, though, that, like... You know, we've got nine characters. So you've got Sonic and his Badnik counterpart, Metal Sonic. You've got Tails and his Badnik counterpart, Tails Doll. You've got Knuckles and his Badnik counterpart, Metal Knuckles. You've got Robotnik and his Badnik counterpart, even though he's already a baddie, Egg Robo. And then you've just got Amy on her own. Oops. As you can see, that Amy could go over the water, no problem. Robotnik can as well, of course. He's uh, he's floating in the Ego Matic. That's one character token. So, but yeah, like, it, in a way, it kind of surprised me we never got a Metal Amy. Like, even to this day, we've never had that. There was one issue of Sonic the Comic where she was almost turned into a Badnik. Oh, actually. There was that one issue, and then there was a story later where she was turned into a badnik by Commander Brutus, who was uh, sort of an evil leader of the badnik army. Uh, but in the games, we've never had an evil counterpart to Amy, and that's kind of strange, really. Also, she can't even turn super, so Amy's really getting a raw deal. Speaking of raw deals, I slammed into that wall, and now I'm in last place. Fantastic. Oh, gosh. Oh no, oh no, oh no! Ah. <laughs> I think it's all but impossible to not constantly be bouncing off the walls in this unless you're an extremely high level player. Fourth place, that's not great. Regular Amy's already a robot. Yeah, she looked kind of like a like Silver Sonic kind of character going. It was in the <laughs> in the unfortunately titled story Girl Trouble, uh, in which Amy made her debut in STC. Obvi obviously, that title was meant as a joke, <laughs> but Sonic does have a bit of an attitude towards women, so. Mm. And we've got to stay hydrated. In fact, I'm going to have more drink. Well, guys, I think we can all agree. That was a pretty spectacularly poor performance here this evening. Dreadful. Truly awful. <laughs> I'm not proud of myself. Okay. So there's one last time. <laughs> Radiant Emerald has Super Sonic Racing as its background theme, incidentally. So, when you are playing as Super Sonic in that level, it feels very cool to pull that off. <laughs> the rework title was Bitches, am I right? There is a line in it where, like, Amy gets kidnapped by Robotnik's troops, and Sonic's reaction is basically, Ugh, oh, women! <laughs> Which, it's really funny, but I'm sure they wouldn't dare do that to death. All right, guys, that's Sonic R. Let's hop into Sonic Jam. If I can get it to load. There we go. <laughs> I just have to move my face over a little bit there. There we go. Now you get to see more of my face, you lucky creatures. So, yeah, I mean, as you guys know by now, we're playing casually. We weren't playing to get a perfect run there. But I would like to revisit Sonic R at one point. I'll, like I said, I'll try maybe get the GameCube version working, because I really like that. That's on Sonic Gems Collection. If you can track down a copy of that, well worth a go. Very fun. Sonic Jam. <laughs> Sonic Jam, then, was a compilation of 
what else? The four classic Sonic titles. We have Sonic 1, we have Sonic 2, we have Sonic 3, we have Sonic and Knuckles, and if you select Sonic and Knuckles, you can lock it onto the other games as well. They did think of these things. But we're not here for that today. Oh, no, no, no. We're here for Sonic World. Have there ever been publicly released build or test builds of the cancelled Sonic Extreme game for Saturn? I'm not sure is the honest answer to that. TCRF.net probably have links if they are available. It must be Sonic Jam because jelly don't shake like that. That's very true. <laughs> it's Sonic World. We've got a cute little Sonic sprite here. Now here's a fun fact I only recently learned myself. This whole area believe it or not, is based on a very early prototype of Sonic Adventure. So in a way, this is kind of the perfect sort of blending of the eras. It's kind of a sign of what is yet to come. We've got lots of fun things to do here. It, yeah, it's just, it's kind of a tech demo, but it's an interactive fun tech demo. We've got these fun little cards that are hidden in the level to give you the cheat codes for the classic games, that's always good. We've got a character profile building over here. We've got a sound test for all of the games in the, uh, the set. We've got movies. We have, what else we have over here? We have an art gallery, I believe. And up on top we have the Hall of Fame, and we'll, we'll have a look at the Hall of Fame once we've done the missions, because I think that's going to prove a nice place to uh, wrap this one up. Before we move on to the rankings, of course. Oh, I'll tell you what I should do, I should change the category, shouldn't I? If Sonic Jam is even uh, a possible option in the categories, uh, cat <laughs> Craft, I can't even speak. categories. More compilation sets could look at how this Omega Collection Plus for how to make compilation titles fun and interesting. Absolutely agreed. This, Mega Collection Plus, and Gems Collection are still the best Sonic collections in my opinion. And like Mega Collection Plus is not without its issues, don't get me wrong. There's some pretty imperfect emulation in there. I mean, the games play fine, it's just sound effect bugs. And it's... To a lot of people, it's not a problem. To me, it kind of is, because it, it's like, ooh, that's not right. But it's, the games are drilled in deep in my brain. But to most people, you won't notice. If you're playing Mega Collection... And to be fair, they might have even fixed it for Mega Collection Plus. I've only ever played the original. Um, but, yeah, suffice to say... Oh, does Sonic Jam have a category? It does not. Okay, well, I guess we're just putting this on as Sonic the Hedgehog, then. Fair enough. But yeah, it's uh, it's a shame that we we don't have more compilations. Like, by the way, I don't know if you speaking of compilations, I don't know if you guys have noticed the music here. It's the menu music from Sonic Origins. So you know, a little nod to, to Sonic Jam. There. That's quite cute. What we've really come for here, then, guys, is this uh, Umbrella Corporation logo. <laughs> this activates the mission list. Oop, no, we don't want to be doing that. So now we want to get whatever it tells us to do. And then uh, hop back on and get the next mission. I assume we have to do it within the time frame it gives us. I'm not sure. It'll give you a little sound effect when you've completed the mission so you can know to head back. I don't know if you notice there's Sonic's spikes stretch out as he's running, I like that. It's a, co a cool little visual effect. So there we are! Next mission! Three red points. Now the thing is, you can do any of these missions um, repeatedly. And what it means by red points is red checkpoints. So we should touch these three red checkpoints. Where is the third one? That's the question. So while I'm doing this I could get... Oh, 
20 rings, like so. Which should update the time that I had for doing that particular mission. So as you keep replaying this, you'll get better and better at all the missions at once, which is quite cute. Where is that last checkpoint? As I'm going to say, Disco Tech announced the upcoming releases I'm excited for. Dai King, Sherlock, Hannah, Urusa, Yatsura, and Space Sheriff Gavin. Some classics in there. Sonic's got to escape Raccoon City. Can't wait for Sonic to be the next de Dead by Daylight killer. He should be one of the survivors. Have Sonic, Tails, Amy, and Knuckles as survivors and have Robotnik as the killer, but obviously he's not really killing you, he's just shooting robots at you or whatever. Admittedly, I don't think Robotnik would put people on hooks. I think that's a bit outside his MO. Where is this last checkpoint? I like that other flickies flying around. That's pretty cute. Oh my goodness. It was right by the start. I'm so dumb. Okay, so we have to beat the original time. That's fine, now that we know where they all are. Camera's not great, it should be said. Um, early 3D game. And obviously, again, no analog stick. at the point where uh, we sort of revolutionised 3D cameras, so to speak. 50 rings! I think that's pretty fair, yeah. Have, have Robotnik turn people into bad nicks. Hey, do you know what? Uh, what? What do we call them? Uh, asynchronous game with Sonic characters could be fun. Like, if you're Robotnik, you've got to put other characters into bad nicks. If you're the heroes, you've got to stop the bad nicks. That'd be quite cute. It wouldn't be scary, obviously. <laughs> it wouldn't be dead. It wouldn't be dead by daylight by any means. That'd be pretty cute. I like that idea. Oh, it's getting tense now. Eight to go. In 10 seconds. Not gonna happen, is it? Oh, just. Oh, I have to get back to the button! Oh, that's ridiculous. Fine. How to get back to the button before it counts my time? That's kind of. kind of a. But maneuver, but never mind. Nice, back over the bridge, that should be spot on. Doink! <laughs> Collect rings to stave off robot transformation. Hell yeah! The upcoming DBZ game where you have to run and hide from DBZ villains looks really fun. Yes! I've applied for the closed beta for that, so you know if uh, I get that, I'll be playing it. And uh, if, assuming it's allowed, I'm sticking it on stream. Touch Miles! Okay, we have to find Tails and grab his hands. Oh, 
But where could he be? Sonic does not have his double jump in this. Tails, where are you, pal? Seriously, where are you? Farmer. Legendary Dragon Ball character. A crappy farmer that gets killed. <laughs> Where the heck is Tails? Oh, head out. No, that's a platform. Thought that was Tails of Shadow then. Well, we're clearly not going to do it on that run because we don't we have time to get back to the timer, so let's try again. Miles, arms per hour. Where are you? Famed for having two arms, as he is. Where the actual heck is he? Wandering off into the nameless zone again, no doubt. Wait, genuinely, where the hell is Tails? Setting the timer again. See if he pops up. Does he... <laughs> now, now, behave. <laughs> Miles does not want to be touched. <laughs> what are you some of, some of your favourite content creators to watch, and what sort of stuff do you like to watch? That's a good question. Um, I I do tend to you know I I I, I kind of sort of like like to curate my. YouTube viewing, if you get me. Um, big fan of Shay May. Mm, in no small part because he's one of my best mates, but he's also a brilliant bloody content creator. Uh, who else is good? Uh, H Bomber Guy. Love his stuff. Maybe you're meant to look for legendary jazz musician Miles Davis. <laughs> or comedian Miles Jopp. Who knows? <laughs> I'd be surprised if either of them are in the game. Who wants to subscribe to on YouTube? Who's good? Let's have a look. So you, what you've done is you've put me on the spot. <laughs> New Legacy Inc. Never heard of her. Uh, I am subscribed to Did You Know Gaming, but at the minute I'm not entirely sure why because I haven't watched one of their videos in ages. To tell you the truth. Uh, Ketchup and Mustard, Mortal Kombat, uh, Experts, Lythero, Big fan of him. And uh, and his buddies on the old uh, Dragon Ball Z fighting games, extremely funny the three of them. Who else have we got? Joe Brennan, he's done some good Doctor Who analysis videos. Alex Yard, summoning salt, of course, fantastic. Doctor Who poop, <laughs> always very funny. Uh, JX, he's done some very good videos. Sonic Yoda and uh, SegaDriven.com, brilliant. Who else have we got? Corporate Kian, quite funny. Uh, the rest of them, yeah, content. Oh, I hear Tails. 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 Where is he? Where the fuck is he? Where'd he go? <gasps> Tails. Tails! 
Come here. Come here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hell yeah, we're great. Uh, terminal montage, very funny uh, video game themed animations. Uh, who else we got? Oh, Amiiben. Amiiben's very good. Quite, quite a young uh, content creator. I think he started when he was like 13 or something. His reviews are really good. Uh, who else have we got on here? Stuart Jet, another good friend of mine. Kind of coming towards the end of the list there. Yeah, got, got kind of an eclectic sort of set of tastes in the old content creation there. Yeah, Miles is. Uh, Miles. Tails is just sort of like flying around wherever. Oh, wait, there's a new summoning cell. What, what's the, the subject of that one? Have you watched Some Call Me Johnny? His Sonic Modding Showcase is something I look forward to. No, I'm not subscribed to him, but I do hear good things. Oh, Razor and Zen then. They're, they're good as well. They do lots of Sonic fan game content as well. They're really fun. Sonic starts chucking rocks at Tails, so he doesn't have to chase him. <laughs> Poor Tails. Five blue points this time. Alright, we've got a minute and thirty to find five blue checkpoints. But where could they be? I haven't even seen any blue ones yet. Sonic, calm down, please, I'm begging you. See, I think the story goes... Oh, there's one. I think the story goes... As they were working on Sonic Adventure, they realised that... They wanted to make a very different game to what they'd started out making. Uh, hence why this is nothing... Oh, for God's sake, Hence why this is nothing like... Sonic Adventure, but they didn't want to throw away what they made, so they stuck it up here, which is cute. Good old Sonic team. I will hit no Sonic teams like that. That's two. These seem to be trickier to get than the red ones. Tails. <laughs> Three. Where are the others there? Oh, is that one there? Yes, one under the bridge, okay. Clearly not going to do this in time, but at least if we know where they are, that would be good. Is that... No, we've done that one, okay. This bridge. Hidden shortcuts in double dash. Ooh. Oh, there was one up there. Shit. Okay, well, now I know where they are, so that's good. Do you know what? Actually, I remember seeing something like that in my inbox, and I, I didn't click on it. So, yes, if there's a new summoning salt video, perhaps I'll give that a watch tonight. Very well researched content about speedrunning stuff. Very well put together, very well made, very well edited. Oh, with some rather cool music. I've totally forgotten where the road Stop them all. Come on. Come on. Three. Oh shoot, one of them is all the way back at the start, isn't it? That's alright, we'll double back and get that. It's all good. Four. Should be okay this time, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Oh, yeah, unless I do something stupid like that. Five! Should just have enough time to get back to the button. 
There we go. <laughs> He's the reason I punch out records. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot you're a bit of a badass at the old punch out. What uh, what what records do you currently have standing, darling? I'd love a spin-off of Mario Kart that has more Nintendo characters in it, and maybe a couple of guest characters too, like Sonic and Pac-Man. Hmm. Mm. To that end, then, you'll want to check out uh, Arcade GP, which has Pac-Man in it. Um, I don't know so much about them putting in more Nintendo characters, generally, because... like I know, I know we've had Link, I know we've had the Inklings. I think if you do that, you run the risk of it just becoming Smash Brothers in racing form. And while that would be cool, it kind of takes away from it being a Mario game, and that's... I don't know. I'm not so sure. I, I think it's it's better keeping its identity. I don't mind having the odd guest character. Um, but I wouldn't want it to be, like, a significant amount, you know. I wouldn't want it to be, like, a, a quarter of the roster or anything like that. Just a couple. Although, in a way, it's kind of strange they haven't had some kind of... Well, I was going to say some kind of Sonic DLC. You can have a, a Sonic costume if you play the Wii U version, can't you? If you've got the uh, Amiibo. So there is that. You have the two easiest records, Glass Joe and Don Flamenco One. There are some Wii Punch Out records I want to go there. But the thing is, it's all all I'm going to you have the two easiest records, but you have them, and there are many billions of people that do not, so there you go. Summoning Souls videos always make me want to get into speedrunning. The only game I consider myself decent enough at to do would be Here Come the Pain's Slobber Knocker Mode, which recently changed hands. End of an era stuff. Oh, there was consternation in the NL chat. There wasn't. <laughs> there wasn't at all. Because <laughs> I like Sprite held that record for a good old while, didn't he? Seven secret cards. We've got two minutes to find these. Then we know where a couple of them are because we've seen them. There's one up there. Oh, okay, I just have to touch it. I don't have to actually read it. That's fine. I think there's one behind here. Yes, there is. I love that little jingle. Dip, 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 dip. How do I get that? Up? How do I reach you, secret car? Hmm. behind this building, I do know that. Uh, oh wait, wasn't there another one in the water? Somewhere? Maybe? Is there anyone online that risks, uh, risks lists records for WWE games? Uh, I think like the, I don't know if it's like speedrunning.com or .net or something, I think there's some on there. I know Nemesis Paradox. Has a couple of records. She's grabbed a few over the years. And uh, took a 12 or 13? I can't remember which one. Whichever one had the streak mode in. That is clearly not going to be up there, is it? Whoa! Damn it. Will that take me over to the other one? Yes, it will. Okay. Hmm. Still a few missing, though. Time to react to that. This taking? 
nowhere in particular. Okay. Not very strange. Oh, Bezo. Did we get this one? Yes, we did. Hmm, this one stumped me, guys, I gotta say. K14, that's right. Love that mode. So much fun being able to see the ranking leaderboards for other people's times and scores. Speedrun.com has the in WWE games. 2K14, I'm literally looking up Defend the Street mode because I want the record. Ooh, I think she has that one as well. I could be wrong. Nemesis really got into speedrunning that one for a while. Or it might it might have been. Oh, now I can't remember, because there's two streak modes, isn't there? There's Beat the Streak and Defend the Streak. I can't remember which one she got, and the other one might have been, like, the story mode. Oh, no. Guys, this is not going well. <laughs> I think we can now fully establish I'm not going to be able to uh, get this one in time. That's it. Just the way I was holding the controller. Oh no, we've got <laughs> we've got speedrunner wars breaking out here. She's got the only verified run for. Oh, there you go then. So well. Records are made to be broken, aren't they? So, hey. <laughs> you have to pit you two against one another. <laughs> one hour 36. I wanted. <laughs> I think this one might have stumped me, guys and gals, and non binary pals. Either way, that's a good old lengthy amount of time. Well guys, I think this one has buggered me. Because there's at least two that I can't figure out how to reach, and a couple that I can't even find, so... Uh, to, to be honest though, I, I, like, spoilers, there's this one, and then there's one for getting a hundred rings. And then you, Sonic jumps into a big ring and that's the end of it, so don't worry, we're not missing anything spectacular. What I would quite like to do, I'm just going to let Tails carry her about, about a bit. Carry me around a little bit, I can't even talk. There is one last little thing I'm going to show off in here before we move on to the grand finale of ranking all these games. And we'll have a good old discussion about that, I'm looking forward to it. This is cute, I like this, it's really cute. See if Taz is going to take me up towards that Hall of Fame building, or if I'm going to get in there myself. This is so sweet, look at him! Oh, they're so adorable! There's two besties hanging out, living their best life. Bless him. <laughs> okay, I'm going to jump off. Here, yeah, thanks for the lift, Tails. Oh, oh no. Sonic, slow down. Slow down, buddy. No, it's not in your nature. Alright. We're going to wrap up Sonic Jam with the Hall of Fame then. 
because I, I can't figure out where those last two things are hidden, guys. Those two or three things, so sorry about that, but don't worry. So in here, then, we have the history of Sonic the Hedgehog, the tracks of spin. <laughs> so I think this is kind of a nice little way to cap off the games we've looked at for Sonic Month. So, April 1990 was when they first came up with the idea for Project Sonic. And later that year, there was a collaboration with Dreams Come True, who of course ended up doing the music for the original games. And this thing here, we've got this whole timeline of the, uh, the classic era. I don't think they're all listed here. Not every game we've played is listed, but all the main ones are. Uh, we have 23rd of June, 1991. Sonic the Hedgehog goes on sale in North America. North America first as well. Then Europe and Japan last. Which let them fix some of the bugs in the game in the meantime. <laughs> they knew what they were doing. Then we had the 8-bit Sonic 1. My very first video game ever. I love that we've got all the different box art. It's so lovely. 8-bit Sonic 2. 16-bit Sonic 2. As we move into late 1992. 1993, Sonic becomes an official Formula 1 sponsor, and then that's when they discovered the Sonic gene. Sonic Hedgehog. And its inhibitor, incidentally, is named Robot Nickinin, so that's quite cute. Uh, 1993, February, Sonic shoots for the Pro Soccer League. So that's uh, when Sega sponsored a Japanese football team. Sonic dominated Formula 1 Grand Prix in 93. There were no uh, Mega Drive main releases in 93. Of course, we've got two in 94. Sega Cherry Coke Summer Tour, 93. Here we go in the arcades, of course. We had Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. And that's when the cartoons began in America as well. Sonic CD, of course, came out in 93. Not on the Mega Drive, but on the Mega CD. Filled that little gap. Sonic Chaos, or Sonic and Tails, as you can see there from the title screen from the Japanese version that came out. Sonic Spinball soon followed. And, of course, the infamous Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. I believe that was the one where the balloon burst and injured a bunch of people. <laughs> so that's fun. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, of course, never released in Japan because it was a Puyo Puyo game originally. So that only has America and Europe covers. And then we've got the 8-bit uh, the version as well, which uh, also got a release in Brazil. Sonic 3, 2nd of February, 1994. Sonic Drift, Sonic the Hedgehog's Game World. Sonic Spinball, the 8-bit uh, version. Oh, we got that one first in Europe, look at that. Tales and the Music Maker, uh, Sega and MTV's $25,000 Rock the Rock concert. Sonic and Knuckles, October 1994, with the best box art of all time. Triple Trouble, November 11th. 1995 Chaotix came out. Knuckles Chaotix, that's out of Japan, of course. Sonic Drift 2, early 95. Tales Sky Patrol and Sonic Compilation, which of course we haven't played. That was the first ever uh, multi cart Sonic game. Um, Sonic, I think, I think Sonic 1 might be on one of the Mega Games sets. But Sonic Compilation was basically a Sonic-themed Mega Games. Uh, you had Sonic 1, Sonic 2, and Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. So that came out fairly late on, um, into the Mega Drive's life cycle. You could grab that, grab Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles, and you've basically got all that was available at that point, which is pretty great. Tails Adventure. Made me pull my hair out. Sonic 2 in 1, which is a uh, Game Gear multi cart game. So we've got Sonic 2 there and Sonic Spinball on one cartridge. Sonic Labyrinth. 
Sonic wins place in film history, the first video game to be included in the National Film and Television Archive by the British Film Institute. God, makes you proud to be British. January 96, uh, the Sonic OVA came out, which is a good bit of fun if you've got that. I've got the DVD, which used to be extraordinarily hard to find and incredibly expensive. I got it for like two quid from CEX. Fantastic. <laughs> Sonic Championship or Sonic the Fighters. It's really nice looking through all this and just, uh, just remembering all these games that I've, you know, over the course of the last month I've played. It's really lovely. Sonic CD was uh, released on PC, one of the Sega PC games. Short-lived range that they had. Of course, there's loads of Sega games on PC now, of course. Sonic 3D Blast, or Sonic 3D Flicky's Island, of course, which we played two days ago. And yesterday, Sonic Blast, or G-Sonic in Japan. Sonic and Knuckles Collection came out February 14th, Valentine's Day, 1997, uh, including Sonic the Screensaver outside of Japan. Which I'd love to get my hand on, but that doesn't work. Japan finally got it uh, a little bit later by the looks of it, separately. And Sonic continues to spin toward the future. Nothing will stop him. And I think that's as good a place as any to bring to an end the games of Sonic Month. Because nothing will stop the world's most famous hedgehog. So, that's all of the games that we were going to cover and all the bonus content we were going to do done, but we're not finished here. Oh no, not just yet. Let's have another little look through the chat before we jump into the final uh, thing that we're going to do here. And I'm quite looking forward to this. We're going to have a good old chat. What have we got in here? Do, 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 do. Sonic CD blew my mind as a kid. My local rental place rented Sega CD, so I rented one with Sonic CD, and it was so much fun. Great stuff. Great game. <laughs> this feels like a recap on Sonic. I was like, no, it was great. I was like, oh, I played that. I played that. <laughs> it's a shame Sega never did more with lock-on technology. I know, amazing, amazing technology at the time. Obviously, it's completely out of date now. Um, but revolutionary at the time. Just brilliant, brilliant stuff. I have super fun memories of Mega Drive Sonic because my Nana had a Mega Drive and Master System growing up. She also had a huge connection, a collection of Sega magazines from the early 90s. Shame she threw them out when she was moving house. It was before the year of game history preservation and classic game resales skyrocketed on eBay. She did try to sell a collection on there, but nobody wanted it, which is a shame because she had nearly every Mega Drive MS game. That is a real shame. Until next Sunday month, every month could be Sunday month. <laughs> See you tomorrow for Sunday month too. Oh, God, no. I don't care. Here we go. Here we go, my guys. Right. There's one more thing we need to do before we wrap up. Sonic Month 2022. We've played 31 games over the course of 31 days. Thank you for following and now it's time to rank them. Oh, Sir Ashu, thank you for the follow. Yes, I've set up a little tier maker list, as you can see, with all 31 classic era Sonic games. We have, in order, Sonic the Hedgehog 1, 16 bit, the game that started it all. Sonic the Hedgehog 1, 8 bit. <clears throat> Joking, Sonic the Hedgehog 1, 8 bit. Sonic Eraser. Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, 8 bit. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, 16 bit. Sonic CD. Sonic Chaos. Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic Spinball 16 bit. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine 16 bit. Uh, Sega Sonic Cosmo Patrol Fight. No, Sega Sonic Cosmo Fighter. Gosh, I can't remember what it was called. The, the, you know the one, the rocket one. Uh, Sega Sonic Popcorn Shop. <laughs> Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bee Machine 8 bit. Sonic 3. Uh, Sonic Drift. Sonic Spinball 8 bit. Sonic the Hedgehog's Game World. Tails and the Music Maker. Sonic and Knuckles. Triple Trouble. Sonic Drift 2. Or Sonic Drift Racing. Knuckles Chaotix. Tails Sky Patrol. Tails Adventure. Sonic Labyrinth. Sonic Championship. Or Sonic the Fighters. Sonic Schoolhouse. Sonic 3D, Flicky's Island, or Sonic 3D Blast. Sonic Blast, and Sonic R. And we are we have five tiers. We have excellent, good, okay, poor, bad, and then at the bottom I've also added a sixth tier, unranked, and you'll see why when we get to that. So what we're going to do, guys, first of all, I'm going to list these in the various tiers. Wacko Wacko S tier. <laughs> I'm going to list these in the various tiers. I'm going to put the Xbox controller down, actually, so I don't accidentally press some button combination. Um... 
And then once we've got them all into the tiers, we're going to rank them from there as well. So it's going to be left to right, best to least best, you know. So, quick little swig of the old water, stay hydrated. Right. No, I'll leave that as it is. <clears throat> so first off then, Sonic the Hedgehog 1. 16-bit. Mega Drive game, 1991. Iconic. One of the most important video games of all time. I don't think there's any denying that. It's a classic. When this came out, it was a complete revolution in video gaming. It changed what people perceived could be done with platform games. It shook up the genre, basically. Platform games before then were quite often a little slow, a little clunky, and after Sonic, everyone was sort of like, oh, we can change that up. Didn't know that. Obviously, Mario is a class of its own when it comes to platform games, but now Mario had a little competition in the form of Sonic. You've got some of the most iconic tunes in the entire series run. You've got some of the most memorable levels in the series run. It's the most incredible pick-up-and-play gameplay that gaming had ever seen, quite frankly. It's intuitive, it's momentum-based, it's brilliant. A complete neophyte can pick up Sonic 1 and 100% understand exactly how to play it. And that's what happened back in 91, and it, it changed everything. And for all those reasons, and so many more, Sonic 1 is going in the excellent tier. And it had blast processing and did what Nintendo didn't, you're quite right. Sonic 1 on the Game Gear, then the 8-bit one, Game Gear Master System, it is impossible for me to be unbiased on this one, because it was my first game. This changed my life. There are so many things in my life today that, were it not for this game, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have an enormous poster from Sonic the Comic behind me. I wouldn't have met the writing staff from Sonic the Comic. You know, I wouldn't have made several of my best and closest friends through Sonic, were it not for this game. This is the root of it all. This is the root of so many things in my life. Me liking video games, you know, be, me being who I am. So on a personal level, this is right up there. In terms of the game itself, um, being a little less biased, however, it's still right up there. It's really good. Again, music, fantastic. The tunes that are... Well, I say tunes. There's a couple of tunes from the Mega Drive version. They're re rendered really well on the Game Gear and Master System. Yuzo Koshiro did the music, so it sounds amazing. Every track's fantastic. There are, and I don't know if you guys noticed this, and I think I mentioned this on one of the, the days, there are no loop-de-loops in it, which is interesting because that was such a key selling point of the original Sonic 1. There's not a single one in the 8-bit version. Uh, Sonic 1 on the Game Gear... Really good level design. Rewards exploration in terms of finding the Chaos Emeralds. Again, totally intuitive. Just a perfect, wonderful experience. And I think they found it very difficult to live up to that for many of the 8-bit games since then. And for those reasons, it is also going in the excellent tier. Sonic Eraser, then. Now, I think this one is probably going to be a foregone conclusion, but I am going to say a few things in Sonic Eraser's defence. I think, as was pointed out um, by Sin Fritz uh, a couple of weeks ago, Sonic Eraser was available over the Sega Mega Net, which is a modem service. It was never going to be a full game. It wasn't intended to be a full game. I think the basic puzzle mode of this is basically alright. It's not as good as Tetris. It's not as good as Puyo Puyo. It's not as good as Columns. If they'd have just stuck Sonic in columns, that would have probably been a better game, I dare say. Uh, not the only Sonic puzzle game that never got a wide release at this time. There was one planned called Sega Sonic Brothers, which had uh, two brothers for Sonic. Uh, a, red, a red Sonic and a yellow Sonic. That never came to be, but a ROM of that is available online, so maybe we'll play that as a curio at some point. Uh, Sonic Eraser, though, it's... A little clunky. It's probably more fun with a second player, but good luck finding someone to play it with you. The puzzle mode, I think, is probably the hidden gem of the game. 
But unfortunately, having a hidden gem in a game that has as many flaws as it does, and, need I say it, the worst soundtrack of any Sonic game. It's all for nothing, isn't it? The soundtrack and the general flaws are so bad, I am going to have to put this in the bad tier. And I do feel bad about that, because there is a kernel of a good idea, like I've said. But... I can't put it higher than that, guys. It's not a fun experience to play, unfortunately. Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car. <laughs> Columbus rules, hell yeah. Um, Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car is... Oh, I have once again covered up the chat box. I do apologise, guys. I'll just get that back on screen for you there. There we go. Anything you say should now appear on screen again. <laughs> Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Pagar is a kiddie ride. Uh, it's about a minute and a half of gameplay for something to keep your kids entertained when you take them to the supermarket. It's not really intended to be a full video game experience. For that reason, even though... Oh, hang on. Having a bad soundtrack in a Sonic game is a war crime. Yes, it's also borderline impossible, and yet they found a way. Did you know there are six sequels to Waku Waku that never released, and then Waku Waku 7 was a fighting game? Wow, interesting. I did not know that. Oh, fake fact. Oh, you, ooh, you got me. Ooh, you got me good. So, yes, anyway, this is not... You know, it's fun. It's a nice little bit of silliness. It's not intended to be a video game. For that reason, I'm putting it in the unranked column because it's not fair to rate it against the others. In my opinion, you may have a different opinion. You may want to put it as as bad, poor, okay, good, or excellent. Who knows? Sonic 2 8-bit, then. Oh, yes, also it brought, brought us the legendary Eggman. Sonic 2 8-bit is, on Game Gear, very, very difficult. On Master System, not much less difficult, but I'd say it falls more into challenging. Graphically, it's a little bit of a bump up from Sonic 1 8-bit. The music, again, is excellent. Uh, Underground Zone is an all-timer. Uh, in terms of gameplay, there are a couple of new features in there. The levels are maybe not terribly exciting, but they're serviceable. Again, you've got the exploration side of things, because you've got to physically find the Chaos Emeralds hidden in each stage. So that's cool, and again, it invites replay. I am going to say that because it's maybe a little on the tricky side and maybe it's trying to do too many things and doesn't always quite get them across, I am going to knock it down just one peg into good. So this is still a damn good game. Don't you worry about that. Sonic 2 on the 16-bit then, uh, Mega Drive um, version. I think we all know this game, don't we? I mean, it, again, it's an, another legendary Sonic game. Some great, great tunes on the soundtrack, some great memorable levels. Emerald Hill Zone, Chemical Plant Zone, Casino Night Zone. Uh, it informed a lot of great Sonic media, particularly Sonic the Comic. Um, had Emerald Hill as a regular setting, the Metropolis Zone was a regular setting. So obviously on a personal level, a game that's very important um, to the things that I like about Sonic. Um, however, it's not without its flaws. I think it's probably perhaps a little on the easy side. So whereas your 8-bit Sonic was perhaps on the challenging side, this one was maybe a little too easy. Um, now that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, sometimes these games are, you know, they, they appeal to younger audiences, so an easy Sonic game is not bad. But I find myself wanting to go back to this one less than some of the others. I think some of the levels are a bit flat. Uh, Hilltop Zone is a recolored Emerald Hill. Now, we we now know why that was. That's because of design changes throughout development. But it is what it is. Um, so, yeah, some of the levels don't quite click for me. Oh, um, Death Egg Zone. Uh, reuses sprites as well. I think Metropolis so might reuse a couple. So there are a few bits where it's a little rough around the edges. We did kind of think that maybe Wing Fortress wasn't quite finished, if you recall. 
it's not perfect. It's a good, fun time, and I do like it. It did give us Tails, and we love Tails. He's a good boy. Uh, however, I am going to put it in the good tier. Up next, then, we have Sonic CD, and what can we say about Sonic CD that hasn't already been said? Well, who knows, because we're going to say some stuff that has already been said about it. Graphically, it's gorgeous. Uh, musically, it's incredible, and you've got two amazing soundtracks to pick from this time around. The level design is fantastic. If you, as, as we covered the other day when we played it in mirror mode, if you go from left to right, or right to left as it was, you're going to finish it in an, a, a very short time. It's not going to be a very memorable experience. But if you play it as intended, if you go out of your way to explore, if you try and get all the time stones, if you try and break all the badnik generators, if you try and break all the hologram projectors, you are going to have a very rewarding experience with this. Going back in time and forward in time, finding all the best routes to time travel, it's a wonderfully rewarding experience. That Honestly, it's better with each replay, I find. Um... It introduced Metal Sonic, it introduced Amy. The bosses are a bit lacklustre. That is the biggest criticism I have of Sonic CD. However, it's still going in the excellent tier. It's one of the all-time greats, guys. Just is. Sonic Chaos. I really like Sonic Chaos. Um, this was... I think this was the first Sonic game I ever finished, now that I think about it. Uh, graphically... Very impressive. Again, it's another little bump up from the previous 8-bit game. Uh, it's the first time Tails can fly at the player's uh, command. Uh, it's quite, quite easy, I would have to say. Um, if you enter a special stage and get the Chaos Emerald, you then do not have to finish the rest of the level in which you entered that special stage, which makes an already short and easy game even shorter and easier. It's still a damn good fun time, though. Music, lovely stuff. The levels are, you know, they're standard Sonic trope kind of levels, but they're good. They're fine. I'm going to put this one in the good tier. This is a good time. I really enjoyed Sonic Chaos, and I, I really enjoyed playing it again uh, over the course of this month as well. Sega Sonic the Hedgehog, then. Arcade game. The, uh, the first proper original journey into the arcade for Sonic. Uh, there was an arcade version of Sonic 1 um, which plays a little differently to the home console version but I don't really consider that as being its own separate thing. Really that's kind of a port. It's designed to steal your coins. Uh, speaking of designed to steal your coins, Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. Now obviously as we know I played this with keyboard and mouse. Um, if you try and play this on a game controller 90% chance it's not going to work for you guys. It just doesn't like it. It doesn't like game controllers. Even Sega themselves can't get it to work on modern game controllers. They tried. It was meant to be in Sonic Gems collection and they couldn't get it to work uh, to a satisfying standard. Like They could put it in, but it would have been borderline unplayable. Uh, so I imagine with a trackball it would have probably been a better experience. Uh, that said... I think the level design is quite repetitive. I think the voices are incredibly repetitive and often pretty annoying. And I think sometimes the levels are a little bit unfair and it really is designed to eat your money at an arcade. A game control like a drunk tank, yeah, pretty much. Um, I would love to play this on original hardware at some point. You know, I mean, the chances of that are microcosmic, but I'd love to see how it's meant to be played. Or even, you know, even getting my hands on a trackball and seeing if I can get it to work properly on PC. Until such a time, though, I suspect I'm not going to be able to fully grasp this one. However, I appreciate that part of the flaws of this one are on the control system that I used, not the game itself. Therefore, I am not going to put this down as a poor game. I'm going to put this as okay. Now, I think even if I played this with a trackball, it probably wouldn't go much higher than that. I don't see me putting it in the good tier. But I think it's, you know, middle of the road. I think that's kind of fair enough. Sonic Spinball, 16-bit. Uh, Despite the fact that it had me banging my head against a wall with one of the puzzles, 
I really like Sonic Spinball. And obviously now that I know what I'm doing when I go back to it, I, I, I'd obviously known how to do it because I've done that level before and I've just forgotten, so that's me being stupid. And maybe not everyone gets tripped up on that bit. Maybe that's just me being a dumbass all around. I quite like Sonic Spinball. I like the concept. I think it's, it's really neat. Um, it's a pretty decent challenge. Once you've finished it and mastered the levels, obviously it's a pinball game, so you have the challenge of going back and getting a high score, which is great. The music is fantastic. It's great. Uh, what's the one in the bad section? I don't recognise it. That's a Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car. It's one of the Kitty Ride ones. Also, hey, Northeast Recluse. Good to see you. Uh, I like Spinball. The difficulty curve is not great. Yes, it is a game that will beat you about the head repeatedly. Um, there are only four levels in it, but I think, judging it by the standards of the original hardware, that's probably okay. Because it would take you a good old while to master this one, I think. So you'd still get a full game's worth of replay value out of it. Obviously playing it now in 2022 with save states and emulation, it's really easy to just sort of scum your way through the game. If you were playing this on the original hardware, you have to learn to get good. And as I said, that music is fantastic. And the oh, we we've spoken about oh the one in bad. Sorry, yes, no, that's uh, Sonic Eraser. The uh, sorry, Northeast Recluse, I wasn't paying attention there, was I? Um, Sonic Eraser is a, a puzzle game from the Sega Mega Net modem system. It's in bad largely because the soundtrack is uh, ear stabbingly bad, <laughs> and it's got a few clunky flaws as well. Um, not ear stabbingly bad is the Sonic Spinball soundtrack, which, uh, you know, we've discussed the grungy sound and I mean, Lava Powerhouse is amazing. Toxic Caves, one of the great Sonic tunes. The boss theme is friggin' incredible. So good. It's difficult. It'll kick you in the teeth repeatedly. It's a fun time, honestly. And if you put in the hours to master it, you're going to enjoy it. This is going in the good tier. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, 16-bit. It's Poyo Poyo. What do you want me to say? Poyo Poyo is fucking fantastic. It always has been. It always will be. It's a very simple, wonderful puzzle game. And this one has Sonic the Hedgehog characters in it. And it means that Scratch and Grounder and Coconuts and the Long John Baldry version of Robotnik are official Sega canon. And what more could I ask for? Love the SSSSS squad, even though they never did a SSSSS Sonic. They failed in their mission. I mean, again, what more can I say? It's Poyo Poyo. It's one of the all-time great puzzle games. It's still going to this get, uh, to this day. It's brilliant. I am, however, going to rank it in the good category because I think because it's a Poyo Poyo game, it's a little unfair to put it as an excellent Sonic game, if you follow me. Alrighty then. Grunge greatness, hell yeah. Um, Sega Sonic uh, Cosmo Fighter, which is uh, one of the other kiddie rides, Again, that's a nice little bit of fun. We got a, we found there are a couple of different endings on that one, depending on your star rating. So that was a fun little bit of trivia. Again, it is a kiddie ride. I'm putting it in the unranked. It's not meant to be a full game experience. Speaking of which, Sega Sonic Popcorn Shop is also going in the unranked thing uh, uh, tier. It's meant to be a fun little animation you can interact with while it bakes you some popcorn. It's not a proper video game, and I think that's fair. By the way, guys, when you're playing through these, uh, uh, if we're playing through these, <clears throat> when you're compiling your tiers, when I share the list on Twitter, um, then, you know, by all means, feel free to put any you've not played in unranked, you know, just keep things fair. That's I did think of putting unranked slash not played, but it's a little clunky, but you know what I mean. Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bee Machine 8 bit there. Again, it's Poyo Poyo. However,. I'm going to knock this one down a little bit, which is a shame because the puzzle mode in this is really good, and I think that's kind of the selling point of it. Be, you know, given a choice between the two, particularly in this day and age with emulation, you're going to go for the 16-bit version. But the 8-bit version of puzzle mode is really fun, so I think that's worth a look in. However, the AI for the main meat of the game is really hard. Puyo Puyo matches against lower level AI should not be lasting as long as that. So with that unfortunate floor in mind, I'm putting this one in the okay tier. And again, obviously that sort of spells out which of the two versions I would recommend. Sonic 3, and I'm going to be honest here, I'm going to rank these together. Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles. 
you guys know this is my favourite game of all time. Clearly, this is going in the excellent tier. Now that I've put it there, I'll justify it. Um, I Again, I'm viewing these as one game. But even if I viewed them as the two separate components, I'd still put them in excellent. Graphically, one of the most gorgeous of all the Sonic games. Musically, probably the best. You've got three playable characters which can change how you play through the levels. Like All three of them can tackle the levels differently. They've all got their own individual abilities that make them feel unique. Knuckles has his own difficult stage layouts. Uh, we've got a two-player mode, which is a lot of fun if you've got a second player with you. Some of the best level designs the series has ever had. Frankly, I dare say the best level designs the series has ever had. Fun boss fights. And again, as I said during the course of playing it, these games have been out from 1994 and I am still finding new things about them now. They are so deep and full of content. They are, in my opinion, the best Sonic games ever made. And when you plug them together with the lock-on technology, it's not even close. Also Michael Jackson. Yeah, easy, excellent. No question. That w There was no question that was going in the top tier. Could never get on with Puyo Puyo myself. I know how to play it, but I'm no good at figuring out where to put the beans on the fly, but I do love the Saturday aesthetic. I think you'll find you mean the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog aesthetic. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm rubbish at Puyo Puyo, but it's fun. <laughs> I do love it. Sonic Drift 1. Okay. This is gonna be... This is going to be a tricky one, actually. We have three Grand Prix in this game. That's not a lot of content. That's 18 tracks. Just streamed a playthrough of Knuckles Game of Sonic 3 Complete today. Still love it. Oh, hell yeah. It's amazing. Sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm getting caught up on Sonic 3 and Knuckles again. Don't, don't get me waxed lyrical in about my favourite game. We'll be here all day. Uh, so, yeah. We have 18 tracks in Sonic Drift. Uh, there's no unlockables. Your playable roster is Sonic, Tails, Amy, Robotnik. Uh, was Knuckles playable in it? I think he was. I'm not sure. I don't even remember if Knuckles was in that one. Uh, either way, we're looking at four, maximum five characters, assuming my memory is going one way or the other. Um, Knuckles wasn't playable, it was just the four, yeah. So, Sonic, Tails, Amy, Robotnik. No unlockable characters, no unlockable tracks. Music's fine. Uh, I appreciate what it's going for, certainly. Uh, once you've mastered it, if you don't have a friend to play two-player with, I don't think there's any real reason to go back to it. I am going to be perhaps controversial. I'm going to put this in the poor tier. I enjoyed playing Sonic Drift, but I don't think I would think to myself, oh yeah, I really want to get back into playing Sonic Drift again, you know? Um, the reason I'm putting it in poor is I think everything it does, Sonic Drift 2 does better. So, poor doesn't mean, you know, outright unsalvageable, of course, and you know, one man's treasure is another man's treasure. For me, it's not one I'd return to. Your mileage may vary on that one. Not that controversial. I remember reviewers hated it at the time. They did. I think uh, Sonic Drift 2 was comfortably the lowest rated Sonic game in STC. And Sonic Drift 1, I don't think, fared a deal better outside of STC, of course. And STC was the most biased Sonic magazine there was, let's not forget. Any game made by Sega, if that dipped below 80%, something had gone very wrong. Uh, Sonic Spinball 8-bit... Do you know what, guys? Do you know what? This is going in the good tier. I wasn't expecting that at all because I played this. And I was like, ah, this is going to be this is going to be a bit rubbish. This one. The levels that it uh, faithfully recreates from the 16-bit version, it does well. It maintains what's fun about those stages. It fixes a lot of my complaints with those stages as well. The levels that are noticeably changed are fun as well. So, like, instead of uh, Toxic Caves, you've got... Uh, oh, gosh, what was it? Like, Toxic 
pools, that's what it was. So that one is actually a different stage. That's not... It's based on Toxic Cage, but it is a different layout entirely. The others are more close to the Mega Drive version. Uh, musically, nothing much to write home about. Although I do quite like the bonus stage, too, and that's quite a fun one. Um, graphically, not too pretty. In terms of gameplay, it's fun. I had a really good time with Sonic Spinball 8 bit. Had a good old time. The bosses are pretty okay. Um, the last boss is radically different to the Mega Drive version, so that was nice. So yeah, a bit, a bit of a sleeper hit, that one. Bit of a bit of a hidden gem. So it's in the good tier. Okay then, up next we have Sonic the Hedgehog's Game World and Tales of the Music Maker. Now, we couldn't get these to work, as you'll recall, because it is impossible to emulate the book uh, that the Sega Pico requires to play. You can get the software to run, but good luck getting it to recognise what you're doing to the software. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Um, regardless of that, these are very kid-friendly educational titles or little kid-friendly mini-games. I think it would be unfair to rank them even if we could get them to work. So they are comfortably going to sit in the unranked tier, and I think that's okay. Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble. This is one that I think was... I was do you know, I, I wasn't sure what to expect from this one. Um, I know that at the time, it was... like The reviewers, and we covered this, the reviewers were kind of getting a little sick of the Sonic formula, but now, of course, we appreciate that if you play a Sonic game, you want the Sonic formula. Of course you do. Obviously you do, otherwise you play a different franchise, but I don't think reviewers at the time fully grasped that. Um, it built up a cult following, and it's now kind of revered as one of the better classic Sonic games. So I didn't really know which side of the fence I was going to fall down on. It is very ambitious. Graphically, it's lovely. Musically, great as well. Good level layouts. Uh, some good bosses. Good fun, all around. I think... It perhaps falls a little short of the ambition, but it's still a damn good time. So, with that in mind, I am going to put this not in the excellent tier, but I am going to put this in a good tier. I think that's a pretty fair assessment, in my humble opinion. Sonic, ga Sonic generally fared really well on 8-bit. Budget gamers definitely weren't going to shaft it, that's for sure. Absolutely. It was definitely better than expected. Yes, I will agree. Um... As, as someone whose first console was, as I said, the Game Gear, I had a lot of these games. I never had Triple Trouble, and I did see it in shops, and for whatever reason, I never got it. So I could have played it, but I didn't uh, as a kid. So, yeah, but it's, it's just nice to know that, you know, I, I, even when I was a kid, I was spoiled for choice for good 8-bit Sonic games I could take with me on my Game Gear, and it's good to know there were even more... Uh, at my fingertips. Speaking of 8-bit Sonic on the Game Gear, Sonic Drift 2, or Sonic Drift Racing, was of course the European title. Uh, this one, as I said, does everything that Sonic Drift 1 does, but better. You now have uh, Knuckles, you have Metal Sonic, you have Knack, they're all playable. You've got tracks that are doing more interesting things. The bonus uh, like one-on-one -on -one race for getting all the Chaos Emeralds in the final GP that's cool. It's absolutely something that makes it worth replaying uh, in a way that the original game didn't have. Uh, we didn't see any of the character endings in either of the games, unfortunately. So, you you know, both of them do have reason to replay, but I think Sonic Drift 2 has more reason to replay. Uh, some cool visual effects in it as well, really, you know, putting the game gear through its paces. I had a good old time with this one, and also it was much more fun and easy to control than the original. I thought it handled a little bit better. So this one's going in the okay tier. It's not a not a groundbreaking one. It's still very short, still quite simple. I don't think you would necessarily play this one as much as you would some of the others, but I had a good time with it. You may, and, and again, here in the okay tier, you may think it belongs higher or lower than that, and I would not be arguing with your stance on that if you do. Knuckles Chaotix on the 32X. Right, I'm going to let you guys in on a secret here. I was pleasantly surprised by this one. Because this is a game that I always wanted as a kid. Because we weren't terribly well off when I was a kid. You know, we, we got by, we were comfortable. I, you know, I never wanted for anything. But we weren't in a position to spend £300 or however much it was on a 32X for one game. So this was the holy grail for me. 
I've long known that it has one of the best soundtracks of the classic era of Sonic, and every track on there is gorgeously re uh, realised. There's some really catchy tunes on there, some all-timers. Graphically, sometimes a little bit sensory overload, uh, shall we say. I think, though, on the whole, it's a very nice-looking game. The sprites are quite nice. Knuckles' sprite is not as good as his Sonic 3 and Knuckles' sprite, but it's all right. It fits the aesthetic of the game. The level designs are a bit boring, on the whole. Uh, we did generally find it was easier to just not bother interacting with the bad nicks. Uh, if you play the game at the speed that the developers intend you to, you pretty much have to avoid the bad nicks, or you're going to just run into things. I felt once I finished it, I could, you know, I could quite happily go back to it to get the good ending. Uh, that was one of those where it was like, we didn't do it, but we could, because there's loads of opportunity, loads and loads, to get the chaos rings throughout the game. You know, if you if you pick up enough rings, you've got absolutely plenty of chance to get all seven of them. So I think that's one that, as a kid, I could have mastered. Um, it was not to be, of course, during this month. But yeah, I had a good fun time with this. I would probably play this again. And I know it's a very divisive game. I have a cartridge of the NTSC version of Chaotix somewhere, even though I don't have a 32X. Saw it in a retro store and thought I have to have it. I, you know, on a similar note, I have Virtual Boy uh, Wario Land uh, for much the same reason. I was like, well, got to have that, obviously. Don't have a Virtual Boy. Of course I don't. Well, you think I'm crazy? <laughs> but I have it. I have the game. I enjoyed Knuckles Chaotix. I think the... Hmm. I think the level design being boring is unfortunately going to force me to push it into the okay tier. But it was okay. It wasn't bad. Certainly wasn't bad. If I was feeling more generous, I'd probably put it in the good tier. But the level design being quite boring, some of the levels being a little frustrating, as we saw. I appreciate what it's trying to do. I don't think it necessarily succeeds at it. It's not a bad game. I quite enjoyed it, and I wouldn't object to going back to it. I'm putting it firmly in the middle of the road. Tails Sky Patrol. Now, uh, sorry, where were we? Uh, Gwen says, Chaotix has level design is its biggest flaw, but I adore the graphics of those special stages. Yeah, the special stages are great, actually. I really like those. And again, as I was saying when I was playing it, how mind-blowing would those special stages have looked if you were playing on an actual Mega Drive at the time? Seems like a game has got a really high difficulty curve and needs a lot of practice to play it well. I think it's got a... I wouldn't say the difficulty curve is high, but I'd say the mastery curve is high. Like, it's easy enough to figure out how to play it, but to make, you know, to get the muscle memory to react in time and to do as the game wants to get up to speed and play properly, that's the tricky part. Uh, so yes, Tales Sky Patrol. You will remember we had to save scum the absolute dogfuck out of this one. Uh, you do have unlimited continues in it. But the thought of playing this on original hardware gives me a friggin' palpitation, you know? If I was a kid, I would be very frustrated if I had this one. Graphically, beautiful. Music, quite lovely. Uh, only very short, very few levels, but they knew damn well why. Because they'd made a game that was incredibly difficult. So this is a game that's going to kick your ass repeatedly. I have to be honest, and I know it's a spin-off... I never felt like this was a Sonic game while I played it. And of course, we know it wasn't. It started life as a different game, and Sega asked for them to put Tails in as the lead character. I would be... I would be really, really... Um, what's the word I'm after? Apprehensive, or reticent, perhaps, to say this is a bad game. And I think if you master it, as uh, Hard Pretzel was saying the other night, they can do it on one life. I think if you master it, it's probably very, very satisfying. However, I don't imagine I would have had an awful lot of fun playing this as a kid. And I, you know, even Save Scum in it, I wasn't having too much fun with it. I'm putting this in the poor tier. Probably one of those games that's really rewarding to master, like I say, but I don't see me going back to do it. Tales Adventure. Wow. This one made me really fucking cross, didn't it? Do you know what's... Another thing that made me most... Uh, here we are. Scarpetra... 
Sky Patrol seems like it would be a decent little game if it wasn't so obnoxiously hard. I agree. I will agree with that one. I think if it wasn't so hard, I could have probably bumped this up to okay. What I'm not going to bump up to okay is Tales Adventure. And, again, graphically, very impressive. Almost on a par with Mega Drive graphics. Almost. Musically, fine. Uh, the sprites look lovely. The biggest flaw of this game, and it's one they absolutely should have thought of and didn't, clearly, is it shouldn't be on the Game Gear. I'm amazed you didn't break something when playing Tales of Avenger, yeah, including my head, perhaps. I think... If this had a larger field of vision, if we if they'd have made a Master System version, I think I might have had a better time with this. It's the fact that at no point in development did they say, hey guys, we don't have a lot of screen real estate on the Game Gear. Maybe we should make tails a bit smaller, maybe we should make the baddies a little smaller. No. I appreciate what it was going for. I appreciate the Metroidvania, as we call them, aspect of it. You know, going back into old levels with new abilities. That's cool. I like that. That's very fun. Jumping and flying, weird. Didn't feel right. And it was constantly throwing me off, as I'm sure you guys will remember. Is this the only game you quit this month? Yeah, this is the only game I rage quit. There were a couple where I was like, oh, okay, I'm, you know, I'm not going to get to the end. Like, I, I, we didn't finish either of the Mean Bean Machine games. But I, I kind of knew I wasn't going to. Because it's Puyo Puyo and you basically the the whim of randomness on that one. So I didn't expect to finish that. Tales of Adventure, I actually hoped I might finish. And I didn't. It kicked my ass. Uh, judging by the amount of cheap shots you took, it would have benefited from a wider field of view. I agree. See, this is the thing. Right? I think if this had been a Mega Drive game, I think we'd have been saying, yeah, it's pretty good. It's really, you know, it, it does ambitious things. It has a cool, a cool concept. And it does. This is the thing. It's got great ideas and it fumbles the fuck out of them because nobody said the screen is too small for this game in its current form nobody said that during development at no point did anyone say we're putting this on the wrong console um, because it made me unbelievably angry it's a little difficult for me to not be biased on this one but to be honest that is such a ridiculous fuck up of game design and unfortunately it led to as a cascading domino effect to every other single problem in the game except for one which was the inventory management which is its own stupid game design flaw I'm gonna have to put this in the bad tier I am gonna say this though now I know we've got uh, a team of people that are re or, or it might actually just be the one person uh, in terms of the programming at least that are remaking Sonic Triple Trouble in a 16-bit style uh, that's made a few appearances at Sage. I think it's going to be at this year's Sage event as well. It's almost certainly going to be. I would like to see someone remake Tails Adventure in a 16-bit style. Give me Tails' proper flight from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Give me a better inventory management system. And give me a wider field of vision. And I think this game could be salvageable. I think I could bump that from bad, possibly to good. So if there are any fan game makers out there that want to challenge, Remake Tales Adventure, I'll play it on stream. I'll do it, and we'll see. We'll see if it, you know, we'll see if it's the game or just me being crap that's made me put it in the bad tier, but there we go. This is it. Remake it and iron out the flaws, yeah. See, like, with Sonic Triple Trouble, like, I appreciate the remake. I think that's cool, but I think with that, it's not to remake it to get out of the flaws. That's to remake it to put more eyes on it. And I like that, because clearly they're passionate about it. But I think remaking a game like Tales Adventure as a fan game to make it good... Because it's, again, like Sonic Eraser, like a lot of these games, there's a kernel of a good idea. And they just fumbled it in one way or another. I think Tales Adventure could be a good game on the Mega Drive. But it wasn't on the Mega Drive, so it's a bad game. Moving on to things that weren't on the Mega Drive, then Sonic Labyrinth. This is the butt of all jokes. Um, this one was the one that I think, and I believe I said this on stream, people generally agree that th this is the consensus one. You know, a lot of people sort of argue back and forth about, oh, you can't really include Sonic Eraser. Oh, no, Tales Adventure's good if you give it time. Nah, Sonic Drift, it's okay, it's short, but it's fine. I think this was the one that everyone generally agrees by a common consensus is the first bad 
Sonic game. And you know something? Do you know something, viewers? I really enjoyed it. I would be tempted to say that it's not really a Sonic game, but, I mean, it kind of is, because it's not a reskin of another title. Um, it started life as a Sonic game. It's Sonic game, in, in, it's a spin-off, you know? It's okay to break the rules. I do feel like, so, you know, if you have to come up with a reason, oh, Sonic's moving slow in this game because Robotnik stole his shoes, maybe at that point somebody probably should have said, well, if we're changing that about the character and we're having to say, well, hang on a second, he doesn't feel like Sonic anymore, maybe you don't make it a Sonic game. But if they'd have made it another game, would it have sold, is the question, and the answer's probably no. I enjoyed this. It was nicely challenging. The time limits were fair. The level layouts, aside from in that, you know, the last one that really genuinely was a labyrinth and was throwing us all over the place, there was nothing we couldn't figure out through a bit of exploration, and we like exploration in our Sonic games. I liked the mechanics of it. I liked the way it played. I generally liked the way that Sonic controlled. I would say, however, it is incredibly short. With... Um, with save states, we finished this in about 22 minutes. Without save states, it took us an hour. Now, fair enough. We didn't get the good ending, I'll grant you. But that's a game that's too short, either way. Um, you know, to, to rack up a 22-minute time, which, you know, a lot of those cock-ups we were making that we were save-stating on were me being pretty stupid, it must be said. I think this was probably a little too easy and a little too short, and I might have felt a touch ripped off if I'd have bought it at £40, shall we say. That said, not a bad experience. I'm sorry, guys, I've got to flow against common consensus. Putting this in the OK tier. This one was all right. Never understood why people think Sonic's shoes are the source of his speed. All they do is make it easier for him to reach such speeds. It's because they don't know the true canon, you know? They don't know the one true Sonic canon. <laughs> I'm going to move the chat box, actually, because it... Actually, no, I'm going to leave it over Sonic. We'll ignore that. Talking rubbish, ignore me. <laughs> Any ending is a good ending. Exactly. I'll agree, Homer. And we, we, we reached the ending in it, and that counts. We've seen Sonic in other media. He's not, not exactly slow in the crippled tortoise without the sneakers. Exactly. And I think that's true of all adaptations of Sonic as well. Okay. Up next, we have Sonic Championship, or Sonic the Fighters, depending on which region. Now, this is a game that I think is probably not likely to be played at EVO anytime soon. As fighting games go, it's not especially deep. But it is very, very fun. And with a second player, it's even more fun. The music is not really quite nice as well. It's visually beautiful. Like, the character models are so good. They just capture all the fun and the cuteness and the coolness of the Sonic characters and all the charm of each individual uh, playable character. Like I say, the, the fighting engine itself is not that deep, but it's doing different things, and I appreciate that. It's kind of, you know, it, it's fighting Vipers, which wasn't the deepest fighting game to begin with, but with Sonic characters, and that's fine. It's fun. I like Sonic the Fighters. It's a good bit of knockabout silliness, and that, honestly is all you can really ask for out of a Sonic game. Is it short? Yeah. But we have to remember, of course, this was an arcade game. And fighting games, of course, are a little different to your coin munchers because they want a cycle of fresh players on that one. They want more people queuing up to put money in. So a shorter experience on a fighting game is not a bad thing. It's a good thing in the era of arcades. The more people that are queuing up to go, oh, hey, I, I want to be player too, I want to fight you next, the better. Uh, the one-player mode is fine. You know, it's, it's a good little bit of fun. Uh, again, it's super short on console. In the arcades, it would have been a lovely bit of fun. Um, and it would have felt uh, well at home among many of its arcade brethren. I think this is a success of a game. It sets out to do something. It nails it. It It, it, it is a success, like I say. It gives us bean. Exactly. It gives us bean. It gives us bark. Uh, Amy has the hammer for the first time. I think this is a good game. And for that reason, I'm putting it in the good tier. Good stuff. 
Sonic Schoolhouse. Now, this was an experience, wasn't it? Um, okay, now let, let's let's jump the gun a little bit on this one. It's an education title. I'm not ranking it. I'm putting it in the unranked tier. I think it would be unfair to rank edutainment titles alongside Sonic CD and Sonic 3 and Knuckles. <laughs> that would be a bit mean. Um, so, uh, to give you my, my sum sum summation? Yeah, that's the word. <clears throat> Top tier game, I will hear nothing less. <laughs> to give you a proper summation, I think this is a very shallow game. I think there is very little wonder that it did not take off with young children or with schools. The educational value itself is incredibly low. I think that it would probably appeal only to the absolute youngest Sonic fans. However, I think it would appeal to the youngest Sonic fans, and on that basis, I think its existence is worthwhile. I think it justifies its existence because I'm, I'm just thinking, little, little me, if I was a five-year-old kid that had just got into Sonic, and I had this on the computer, I'd be a me, a me element. I would absolutely love it. Ah, uh, where are we? What other Sonic game is a New Jersey kangaroo? Exactly. Even for an educational game, it's bad. Educational games can be good and well-made. They can, and I think this one is not good or well-made. And I had plenty of fun CD-ROM games, and you know, I've had some educational CD-ROM games when I was a kid, and they were good. They were great. Uh, I only caught a brief glimpse of the stream. I can't get used to Sonic sounding like he's only about eight years old. Yeah, like, they had Sonic voiced by a woman and pitched up. Like, you can have, you can have one or the other, but to do both, it just makes him very squeaky. Uh, justify your existence. Yes, absolutely. I give, I give six-year-old me more credit than that. Yeah, sure. Um, sorry, nine-year-old me. That's, <laughs> I'm guessing that's what we meant to press call the shift key, perhaps. Um, I think that's fair. But I'm just thinking, like, you know, if I was a, a wee little kid, I'd be like, oh, it's Sonic, and he's talking, and he's my friend. So I think it justifies its existence. I wouldn't call it good. And I wouldn't say it's necessarily the best purchase. In fact, I'd say, again, it's very shallow. It's probably not worth a look in but a look in we gave it anyway sonic 3d flicky's island or sonic 3d blast if you are of the american persuasion this came quite late in the mega drive's lifespan i have very vivid memories of this period uh, in time we did only play the mega drive version the saturn version improves on the graphics quite a bit uh the music is completely changed i don't prefer the sonic uh the saturn soundtrack i know some people love the saturn soundtrack i prefer the mega drive soundtrack that's personal preference of course and it's not gonna it's not gonna impact on uh any ranking that i give to the game what i do think though is i think this absolutely squeeze five-year-old sorry <laughs> i think this squeezed everything it could out of that console in terms of what the mega drive was capable of Again, we saw some really impressive visual tricks. The the FMV intro, for God's sake. How they managed to do that on that hardware is incredible. And I do recommend checking out Game Hut's videos about Sonic 3D, showing how they did these things. It's very, very interesting. Even if you don't understand programming stuff like me, I find, find that stuff really clever. Um, musically, brilliant. That's the Mega Drive sound chip pushed to its limits, and it's beautiful. Green Grove Zone, Act 1, one of my all-time favourite Sonic tracks. I love it, and I'm so glad that it's returned a few times as well. It's there in Sonic Adventure. It's there in one of the Olympic Games, uh, video games. Just a great tune. And it's full of great tunes. Rusty Ruin Zone. You've got a Volcanic Valley, which is atmospheric. Uh, Diamond Dust, which is really fun and wintry and cool. Just brilliant soundtrack. I like that it tries something different. 3D Blast is good, the learning curve is a cliff, it's easy until it's very hard. Yes, I think that's possibly the one thing I would say against it. But again, thinking in terms of getting your replay value on a full price £40 Mega Drive game, I think that's probably fair enough. You know, if I was playing this as a kid, I would play through it repeatedly to get better and better at the stages and progress further, and that's not a bad thing. 
here as a boring adult, I have save stated my way through the game. <laughs> but you know, whatever. Um, it's a good game. Is it as good as uh, its direct predecessor, Sonic 3 and Knuckles? No, of course it's not. But it's a good game. And it gave us the uh, upturned spikes that <laughs> Sonic the Comic used for ages. It's going there in the good tip. Sonic Blast on the, well, 8-bit systems, we'll say, because it's mainly on the Game Gear. Uh, Brazil got it on the Master System, that's what we played it on. I can't imagine for one second enjoying this on the Game Gear because of how closed in the field of view is. On the Master System, it wasn't bad. Until we got to the water level, and it was the worst shit imaginable. Uh, you guys who tuned in yesterday morning will have seen what a miserable time I had on those stages. Um, the last couple of areas of the game, significantly harder than the first three levels. I can't go back to Sonic 3 myself. The whole escort thing and the difficulty curve suddenly shooting through the roof puts me right off. That's fair. I mean, in fairness, like if, you, if you're if you going to say to me, pick a Sonic game to go and play for the next two hours, clearly I'm not going to pick Sonic 3 to <laughs> Unless I just I just fancy it out of the blue. If you're saying pick pick a favorite, obviously I'm going to pick one of the others. But uh, yeah, it was a painful old experience yesterday. Just me repeatedly drowning and failing to make jumps and the level layout not being intuitive. It's a very short game with only 15 stages. Granted, there's an extra boss if you get all the Chaos Emeralds, but an extra boss isn't really that big of a pull. Yeah, uh, stupidly hard for all the wrong reasons. It was it was honestly one of the the worst experiences I've had throughout the whole month. Like I wasn't tearing my hair out at it, but it wasn't fun, and I very nearly rage quit that one yesterday as well. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Is it salvageable? <sighs> Maybe. I think if I played it on the Game Gear, I would have had a miserable time. I played it on the Master System. I had an okay time. I am going to say, and I'm going to kind of, I'm going to court controversy again. Purely because we played the Master System version, I'm putting it in the port here. If we'd have played the Game Gear version, if the Master System version didn't exist, that would be bad. Uh, graphically, it's not very nice to look at. Musically, it's pretty forgettable. The bosses are okay. Um, as soon as we figured out the pattern for the last boss, it, w it was basically pointless. It was an exercise in wasting my own time at that stage. Um, that water level was horrendous. The first three stages were so easy as to be laughable. The last two were either astonishingly difficult or, frankly, just badly designed. So yeah, like I say, had I played this on the Game Gear, that would have been an easy bad. It was obviously it was obviously the game needed to be played on Master System, yes, 100%. That's the only thing that's salvaging it from being in the bad tier. Had I played that on the Game Gear, that would, be, that would have been bad, no question. So then, Sonic R is the last game. And, I mean, you guys saw what a good time I was having that, even though it was kicking my ass today. I like Sonic R. It's a really fun little game. It's got wonderful music, and it's so cheesy, and it's so 90s, but I love it. It's earnest, and it means it. So, you know, it, it means everything it says. Every message that those games have come from the heart. Uh, it's got a little bit of fan service. You know, you've got Egg Robo in there. You've got Metal Sonic. Uh, you've got new characters, Tails Doll, Metal Knuckles. It is probably the most successful of the Sonic racing games from the classic era. It's been outdone by Sumo Digital's output, I think it's fairly safe to say. Uh, I could feel the sunshine, yes. <laughs> I I think the level design on this is it's pretty good. You know, it's pretty fun stuff. Playing as a character that wouldn't slam into the walls repeatedly might have given a different outcome today. Finding the Chaos Emeralds gives you replay value. Finding the character tokens gives you replay value. There's stuff to go back to here. It is too short. There's no question about it. It's absolutely too short. If I paid 40, 50, 60 pounds for this at, at launch and then finished it in an afternoon, which is what I did when I played it in the GameCube version for the first time, I would have been astonishingly upset. But I kind of don't mind it in isolation on its own now. 
Uh, and obviously on Gem's collection, it was in there with Sonic the Fighter and uh, Sonic CD and a bunch of extra unlockables. So we finish it in an afternoon. Oh, well, never mind. There's a bunch of other really fucking good Sonic games on here. Never mind, eh? I like Sonic Art. It's full of character. It's a very honest game. It's just a nice time. It's never going to be Mario Kart. It's never going to be F-Zero. But it's a nice bit of knockabout fun. And honestly, that's fine by me. This one's going in the good tier. I have a lot of nostalgia for Sonic Kart. I used to play it all the time, but I do think it benefited from having an analog controller. Yes, the GameCube version is unquestionably the better version of the game. Uh, I mean, it is the PC version, as I said, so if you if you can't get hold of a GameCube, uh, grab it on PC. Get the, get the Make sure you get the 2005 version, though, because the older version will not work on modern machines. But yeah, I, I, I recommend Sonic Kart easily. So here we are, guys. These are the tiers. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 unranked. Two in bad, three in poor, five in okay. We've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in good, and five in excellent. And that, to me, pretty well says that these games are, on the whole, from this era, you're going to have a good time. So let's rank them individually, then. Uh, obviously, unranked means unranked. We're not going to bother putting these in a specific order. It's impossible, really, to judge these against one another because they're all playing to different criteria. None of them are traditional video game experiences, so that's that, basically. The bad tier, then, I'm going to be honest with you here, guys. It drove me mad. Tales of Adventure is still better than Sonic Eraser. At least it's, you know, it's a full game, so it's almost not fair. It looks nicer, it sounds nicer, and I think, while I would say both of them have a kernel of a good idea, Tales of Adventure has more good ideas generally. Poor tier then. Sonic Blast, Tails, Sky Patrol and Sonic Drift. Of these three, I think I'm probably going to leave Sonic Drift where it is. Um, that's, you know, it, it sets out to be a racing game. It succeeds in being a racing game. We've got three different genres here. We've got a racing game, a platform and a rail shooter, if indeed we can call it a rail shooter. I think other than the water level in Sonic Blast it was basically fine in terms of in terms of the gameplay like it was too easy absolutely it was well too easy for those first three levels and then again some of the later stuff was a bit cheap we that we were getting hit by enemy placement that was there was no way to react to it i do feel there's more of a deep game in blast than there is in tales of sky patrol though and I feel bad about criticising Tales of Sky Patrol so much because it's trying to do something different and again it didn't start life as a Sonic game but perhaps that's why it feels more like it belongs bottom of that tier. Uh, can't argue with any of that. I'm not so keen on Sonic the Fighter myself. Don't look like how it's possible to lose any means of blocking attacks. That's true. Wacky wacky top, top tier. <laughs> You'll never be happy until we, we've done that. Okay, in the okay tier then. Sega Sonic, 8-bit Mean Machine... Mean Machine? Mean Bean Machine. Sonic Drift 2... Chaotix, and Sonic Labyrinth. Okay. I am going to put Chaotix at the head of this tier. It's... graphically lovely, musically lovely. I... It doesn't always succeed where it tries, but try it did. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to put that top. Here's where it's going to get tricky though, isn't it? Hmm. Sega Sonic, 8-bit Mean Bean Machine, Drift 2 and Labyrinth. Wow. Because like because these games are so sort of middle of the road, it is actually quite difficult for me to rank them <laughs> individually. Uh, I think I probably had the most fun playing Sonic Drift 2 out of these, I would say. That was the one where I felt the best when I succeeded in it. Uh, in that regard, I am also going to knock Sonic Labyrinth up a couple of ranks. And that actually feels about right, looking at it like that. I'm pretty content with that. Um, again, maybe if I played Sega Sonic using a trackball, I might have bumped that up a couple of spaces, but that feels right. Good tier, right, this is where things are going to get interesting then, isn't it? 
Gosh, wow, okay. 8-bit and 16-bit Sonic 2, Sonic Chaos, 8-bit and 16-bit Sonic Spinball, 16-bit Mean Bean Machine, Triple Trouble, Sonic the Fighters, Flicky's Island, and Sonic R. Ah, wow, these are all good. Well, of course they're all good, that's why I put them all in good tier. <laughs> what a stupid thing to say. Right, which one would I say is the best out of these? I'm going. I'm going to be honest, guys. The best one is probably 16-bit Sonic 2, isn't? It? I don't think that's a controversial statement. I think that's probably fair enough entirely. Uh, I think following that, I would probably be inclined to put Sonic 3D, uh, which again I think is probably fair enough and not that controversial. Your opinion may vary. Ah, uh, let's see now. I put Sonic Chaos ahead of 8 bit Sonic 2. I'd put. Mmm. I'd put Sonic Spinball ahead of 8 bit Sonic 2. I don't know if I put it ahead of Sonic Chaos. That's tricky. I might leave that as it is, actually. That looks alright to me. Um, 8 bit Sonic Spinball, I might be tempted to put here. Triple Trouble. Ooh, it's oh, it's getting hard, guys. It's getting difficult. Oh, do you know I've done that and I regret it immediately. No, I'm no. Sixteen bit Mean Bean Machine is going ahead of eight bit Sonic Spinball. I'm sorry, it just is. It's Poyo Poyo. I can't. I can't put it down too harsh. <laughs> I've already got it at the bottom of the OK tier. I can't put it at the bottom of the good tier as well. Uh, triple Trouble. It's probably a more rewarding experience than Spinball 8-bit, and that's probably fair. Sonic the Fighters. Oh, man, I want to put that quite high up, actually, because it's just fun and silly and daft, and I love it. I'm going to put the... Oh, gosh, I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> this is so difficult. I'm going to put it there. And I think that's pr that's probably fair. And again, this is all just my opinion. You may disagree, and you're very welcome to. Sonic R. Right, I'm going to put above these. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. No, I'd say Sonic R is probably better than Sonic the Fighters. Is it better than Sonic 2 8-bit? I had more fun with it, perhaps. But I don't think that means... It... Oh, do you know what? Yeah, I'd put it above something 2-8-bit. Would well, I put it above Spinball? Hmm. I'm going to leave it there. Just for now. I think that looks probably about right. And that looks pretty fair to me. Excellent tier. Now again, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, I'm rating these as one game. It's the best game ever made, so clearly that's going there. You all knew I was going to put it there. Which leaves us with Sonic 1, 16-bit, Sonic 1, 8-bit, and Sonic CD. And Sonic CD, I'm afraid, is going to have to go there. Um, because it's just friggin' excellent, isn't it? Well, of course it is. That's why it's in the excellent tier. <laughs> so Sonic 1, 16-bit, Sonic 1, 8-bit. Ooh. This is actually tough, but I think I'm going to leave that like that because I think if I move Sonic 1 8-bit any higher up, that would just be personal bias. So let's see what we have here. Oops. Is that what I want? Save. Oh. Oh, here we are. Nope. Can I please inspect this image? Download image. Oh, there we are. Right. So I just need to very quickly change the window capture here, don't I? Do, 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 do. Oh, whack. <laughs> can I find the damn thing? Can I L? Do you know what? Let's just do a full screen capture because it's not going to show up properly otherwise, I don't think. Or is it? Sorry, guys. I'm just 
titting about with Streamlabs trying to get this to work and it's not playing fair. That gonna do no, that's internet security. We don't want that. <laughs> no, 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 goodness me. Oh here we are. Photos. Is it gonna display? Of course it's not gonna display. That would just make sense and we can't have that, can we? Oh never mind, we'll just switch it back to how it was originally. It's being silly, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you what, guys. Either way, we'll put the finished image on... Oh, now that I say that, it's bloody working, isn't it? State. Oop. Spoke too soon, didn't I? Bollocks. Here we go. Here we go. Goodness me. Honestly. I, oh no, what is going on? <laughs> all I want to do is make it look nice for you all. Oh, there was a button here that said presentation mode. Is that what we want? No, it was not. Oh, screw it. It'll do. <sighs> so here we are then, guys. We've got them all on one screen at least. Uh, I'll put this on my Twitter. Um, we'll put it. Um, maybe I'll pin it uh, in my pinned post. So this is the end results of Sonic Month. Uh, where are we? My ranking would be different, but not enough. I'd argue any of these spots. I rank some of these different. I can't argue with any of these picks. Sixteen bit Sonic Two is my favorite video game of all time. It not being an excellent here breaks my heart. It's close. It's really close. I so nearly wanted to put it in excellent. It is, of course, an iconic game. I for me. It's the fact that it's a touch easy, and it, there's a couple of things that it just doesn't stick the landing on. But, it, I mean, top of the good tier versus bottom of the excellent tier, I mean, really, there's nothing in that. You, if you want to put that in excellent tier, I am not going to argue. You know, I think that's fine either way. So, here's the final uh, the final stats then, guys. Oh, no, and I've got a camera that's peeking over the top of the thing. There we go. Move my face again. <laughs> so here we are. The finished end product. In the unranked tier, we've got Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car, Sega Sonic Cosmo Fighter, Sega Sonic Popcorn Shop, Sonic the Hedgehog's Game World, Tales on the Music Maker, and Sonic Schoolhouse. And then, from worst to best, we have Sonic Eraser, Tails Adventure, Tails Sky Patrol, Sonic Blast, Sonic Drift 1, 8 bit Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, Sega Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic Labyrinth, Sonic Drift 2, Knuckles Chaotix, 8 bit Sonic Spinball, Triple Trouble, 16 bit Mean Bean Machine, Sonic the Fighters, 8 bit Sonic 2, Sonic R, Sonic Spinball 16 bit, Sonic Chaos, Sonic 3D, 16-bit Sonic 2, 8-bit Sonic 1, 16-bit Sonic 1, Sonic CD, Sonic 3, and Knuckles, the best game of all time. <laughs> you knew I was going to put that top. So, if you guys would like to supply your own list of Sonic games, um, ranking them, I am going to share this list uh, via my Twitter once we go offline. So I'd be really interested to see what you guys make of all this. I'd, I'd love to compare notes, see what you guys uh, think about the Sonic franchise. And, wow, do you know what? I can't believe I've actually played all these games this month. And maybe I'll come back to some of them again down the line. What a good old series. What a brilliant, bloody series Sonic the Hedgehog is. And that, guys, is going to do it for tonight. And more than that, it's going to do it for Sonic Month. Can you believe it? It was an awesome month, Anaroni Hime. Can you believe it? 31 days. 
31 games of the classic era. We have done it. I'm going to be streaming Sonic the Comic almost every morning next month. Do as many of what I have left as I can. Awesome! Looking forward to that. Hopefully I'll uh, be able to catch a few if I'm not at work. This is a really nice thing to do this month. I'm glad you think so. I'm glad you guys have enjoyed it. Because this is not the original plan I had for July. Um, I was going to do a 24-hour stream. I'm glad I did this instead. I think this has worked out much better. We've been able to give these games a fair shake on the whole. We've done plenty of fun bonus content as well. And there's still so much more to do. I bloody love this series so much. Even some of the weaker games are still alright, and that, honestly, to me, kind of says it all. A very, very, very good series. Um, thank you all. It's been really lovely, and it's been nice, nice to know that you guys have enjoyed it as well. Um, going forward, then. There will be further Sonic streams at some point. I would love to do Sonic Adventure, which I've mentioned before. Uh, there are other more recent Sonic games I would like to play. Uh, and also, now that Sonic Month is at an end, I'm probably going to branch out and play some other games a little bit. I'm not going to be on daily um, going ahead. I'm probably going to aim. I'm going to aim to do twice a week. I might do more. I might do less. Um, but I'm going to aim to do twice a week. Um, it's it's been really fun playing these games. Um, but I, yeah, I, I'm gonna, gonna branch out and play some non-Sonic for a while, I think. Um, we'll see what happens. I, I want to set up the old WWE universe, if I can get that running. Um, there's some Dragon Ball stuff I want to play at some point soon. Just loads and loads of fun games I want to share with you guys. And the way I look at it, if I'm gonna play them anyway, I might as well play them on stream, and you guys can enjoy the benefit of them, right? Um, I don't know what the next stream will be. That might be a bit of a mystery. I'm probably going to have to go away and think about that for a while. It might just be like set up for universe mode. We, we can have a, a just chatting stream as I download a bunch of stuff maybe. Who knows? That could work out quite nicely. Uh, or we could build some arenas together. I am going to say though uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed every one of these streams. Even Tales Adventure when it made me really very cross. I've enjoyed all of these streams. I've enjoyed sharing this experience with you. I've enjoyed playing these games. It's just been a bloody lovely time and I've really enjoyed every second of it. And I'm glad that I've kept you guys entertained. Or at least I hope I have. <laughs> I mean, the, the, there's positive feedback so far, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, and long may that continue. Hopefully I'll be able to keep on entertaining you guys here on stream and, of course, with my... My brother's over at New Legacy Inc., which you should be following on Twitch if you aren't already. Um, I think I'm going to start wrapping up now, guys. Um, so, let's see. What Sonicy things have we got to advertise? Uh, you can head to my Twitter, LT Dangerous. Uh, I'll share the tier maker on there, and I'd love to see your guys' uh, responses to that. I want to I compare and contrast. Uh, you can find the video on demand for Sonic Month and all my other streams that are still available here on twitch.tv forward slash ltdangerous. You can find them at youtube.com forward slash buzzbomber. Uh, I'm going to aim to get the last three nights uploaded uh, this evening or overnight into tomorrow, so they'll all be there for you to watch at your leisure, basically. Uh, you can head to stconline.co.uk to read Sonic the Comic Online, of which I've written a number of comic strips for them, including the lead strip on the current issue. Uh, you can head to... Oh, I've not advertised this once the whole stream. What an idiot. Blurb.co.uk forward slash LT Fletcher, and make sure the LTF are capitalised or it doesn't work, wherein you can buy my books, uh, including... Sharper Than a Cyber Razor Cut, The History of Sonic the Comic, 1993 to 2018. The first uh, 25 years of STC, with input from artists, writers, editors, everyone that really that near enough that's helped make that comic be what it is over the course of 25 years in one fantastic narrative and loads of cool bonus features I was very happy to put in there. So I'd love it if you guys check that out. Uh, you can head to sonicamalgam.com, as in amalgamation, um, wherein you can read my big, long, extensive Sonic the Hedgehog fan fiction. New chapters every Monday. Uh, so tomorrow we've got a new one going up, then, as a result. And I think that's going to do it. So let's end as we started, shall we?
we've got to we've got to put this on to say farewell to Sonic Month, but maybe not the last Sonic Month. Who knows? Who knows what next year might bring? Maybe I'll do another one. <laughs> Thank you all for joining in. It's been lovely. So from me and Sonic and Sonic and Knuckles, <laughs> we will catch you again. You guys all please take care. It's been lovely having you here and I'll see you soon. Take care and stay Sonic. <laughs>